Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. In this video, we're going to be looking at gun fit, which is how well your rifle fits your body. So, let's roll those titles. So let's talk about gun fit then. The way a gun fits your body is essential to your shooting performance. Getting it right will make you more accurate in your shooting and therefore make you more confident. So what we're looking at is a gun that is the perfect fit for us. Now the problem is that we're all different with different heights, with different arm lengths, with different shoulder whips. And we never we don't all hold the rifle the same way. Now most guns are made as one size fits all. And uh, during my research, I've read that perhaps as many as 60% uh, or more of shooters are actually shooting a rifle that doesn't fit them properly. So let's have a look at what we can do to try and improve upon that and make some adjustments to our gun so that we get a better fit for our own body. The first aspect of gun fit that we're going to look at then is something that you may have heard of before. It's probably the most common aspect of gun fit and that is length of pull. Now what I mean by length of pull, if I show you my rifle, length of pull is defined as the measurement from the front and centre of the trigger blade to the rear centre of the butt pad. That's the length of pull. Now, you can measure your own length of pull by uh, bending your trigger finger 90 degrees and then measure in between uh, the pad of your trigger finger and the crook of your elbow. And that is your own length of pull. Another thing you can do to measure it against your rifle is basically just fit your rifle across your forearm um, and see with your finger on the trigger blade and see how far into the crook of your elbow your, um, your rifle butt fits. Now some people suggest that there should be as much as a half an inch gap between the end of the butt plate and, um, uh, and your elbow or the crook of your elbow and I think that is to allow for for any clothing or padding that you um, that you might wear uh, when you're shooting so um, from what I can make out from my research with this that um, you know some people rigidly follow that as a length of pull and others say that it's um, not necessarily um, um, a usable solution um, but something to bear in mind is, I mean, there's definitely something in this, because if you can imagine that if if that if that distance is too short for you, um, you're going to be, you know, the, the, the rifle's going to be too small and you're not really going to be comfortable. And similarly, if that distance is too great, you're going to be reaching, stretching to try and reach the trigger and you're not going to be in a comfortable position. So certainly it makes sense that, um, that that should fit you. I mean, in this instance, as you can see here, um, this, this fits perfectly for, for that measurement. Now, one thing that I came across when I was looking into this is another way of, mentioning, of, uh, of measuring uh, length of pull, uh, which seems to be, uh, from, from my part, uh, point of view, seems to give you a more um, comfortable solution and um, the way that that works let me remind myself is you basically let me I'll show you what I yeah you take your your stock and you put a bit of tape something that's not going to damage your stock so I've got painters tape here even though this is a, um, a plastic stock anyway but obviously you don't want to damage your lovely wooden polished mahogany stock so um, a little bit of painter's tape or something that's going to be 
able, you're going to able to be removed without leaving any damage. And then what you do is you measure from the front of center of the trigger blade, you measure back a measurement of five and three quarter inches, which is 146 millimeters. Okay. And what they say then is that that, that measurement back from the trigger, that is the ideal position for the tip of your nose on the stock. So when you put your stock, when, when you then put your stock in your shoulder, uh, you measure down from your nose and where your nose, the point where your nose uh, makes, makes a mark on there, you measure the difference and that will tell you how much shorter or how much longer your stock needs to be for the ideal scenario. Now, um, there's one company uh, that makes stocks that I found online uh, that actually produce a measuring gauge. I'll show a, a photo on the screen. You can see all the measurements are on there, so they get their their clients to, you know, put their uh, put their that um, measuring gauge into their shoulder, and uh, they can see from the tip of their nose and take a measurement, um, and that's the measurement that they build into the stock that they uh, that they make for uh, for their clients. But say you can do this on this. Uh, you know on your own gun to check how far you're out you are I mean obviously if we're talking about just a couple of you know a few millimeters um, I wouldn't worry about it if you're significantly out then well what can you do about it well um, there are a lot of rifles these days that come with um, adjustable uh, with butt plates that are adjustable for length so that you can push them in to, to reduce the length or pull them out to increase the length uh, you can buy products well, I've got here. These are uh, butt plate spacers. These are made specifically for um, an Air Arms S510, uh, where you, you can unscrew that and they, they basically hook in and clip in so you can make adjustments. Um, you know, one is, one is a, um, produced by a company. This other one uh, is a 3D printed one. So they're fairly simple. Um, obviously, you know, uh, any plate of a, the the right thickness with the right holes in. I mean, uh, you can get a bit of um, plastic, a bit of plywood, or or um, stuff just to make your own if you need to. Just cut round the end of your butt plate and um, mark where your holes are, and uh, screw your butt pad back in. So that's one way to extend them. The only way to um, to actually reduce your, um, uh, your your stock length is obviously to cut cut off the end of the stock um, and unless you're very brave I wouldn't suggest you do that you're probably better off taking it to a gunsmith and uh, getting to do getting them to do it for you because um, obviously you'll get a, you'll get a much more professional job um, so that's uh, that's the two ways of uh, the um, that's length of pull then uh, to get that nice comfortable position in the shoulder Next thing we're going to talk about then is the the cheek piece on your stock. Um, obviously called cheek piece because it uh, it connects with your cheek. Now before we move on with this, obviously to get the fit properly, you need to be sure that you are actually mounting the gun uh, correctly. Uh, and by that I mean, you know, fitting the cheek piece exactly on your face where it's supposed to go. Now. Um, see a lot of people sometimes mount the gun and they're not in the correct position you want to get your eye line alignment sorted and make sure that your cheek piece is the correct height you need to make sure that you're actually mounting the gun correctly so if you feel the side of your face you can feel a bone um, roughly level with the center of your ear you'll feel your cheekbone and then if you go down there's a gap between the cheekbone and your jawbone and that line of the cheekbone there, that's where you want the narrow part of your cheek piece to settle in there. And you want that to be in that position every time. So when you bring the gun up, you can sort of tilt it over, fit it in there, and you'll feel it sort of like slot in. And then it sort of almost sits in and your cheekbone sits on top of it. And if you're mounted in that position every time, then 
doesn't really matter what position you're shooting from your eye alignment should be the same each time and um, if you're doing that correctly then we can get the cheek piece the right height so that uh, you're shooting more accurately so looking at this then your basic um, <clears throat> gun stock you'll have a, a molded or a carved cheek piece um, you might be lucky enough to have an adjustable one so that you can raise the height up and down if you need to um, so what can you do if this cheek piece isn't giving you the height you need to get your correct eye alignment now we'll talk about um, uh, scope rings and how you can adjust the height of your scope with scope rings in a minute but first of all we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with the basics on, on the cheek piece so if you've got a fixed one like this then you can buy attachments um, you can uh, buy these gel pads that fit on um, you can buy the sleeves that go over the top that have various little bits of foam that you can add in to adjust the height um, on one of my rifles um, I've got a uh, an elbow pad on my um, LGV I use an elbow pad twisted round um, so the foam from the elbow pad just gives me that extra little height also just feels a little bit more comfortable for me than you know just the bare stock um, on my uh, budget underlever um, I got a bit of foam and put the foam on and then I've got this sort of wrapped it with self clinging bandage um, and that's held the foam on as well but um, if you go online and, and um, look for sort of uh, cheek piece extenders and things like that you'll find plenty of stuff that you can buy uh, that will extend that if you need to another alternative which is uh, quite common if you've got the wooden stock show you the previous owner of um, of um, my um, S400 uh, tried a valiant effort it's not a bad job really of making this adjustable although for me it didn't really need to be adjustable um, but um, you can find you know gunsmiths and people online that will do a really nice job seen some um, seen some really nice um, adjustable cheek pieces that have been made by uh, people particularly on uh, some of the air gun groups on Facebook if you search those you'll find people and with that in mind, here are a couple of lovely examples made by a guy called Nobby, who you can find on the uh, Airgun Forum at airgunforums.co.uk. Now, obviously, your cheek piece height, or how high your cheek piece needs to be, is going to be determined by the position of your scope on your rifle. And um, the most common approach. Uh, and the advice that most new shooters are given is uh, use um, scope rings that will mount your scope on the rifle with your objective lens which is at this end uh, as close to the barrel as possible so you don't have a great gap so you've not got a massive um, sight height above uh, the barrel now obviously you might find on occasion that you need to mount the uh, if you've got a fixed uh, cheek piece on your rifle that you need to mount the scope higher uh, because the scope may be too low for you to get the correct align eye alignment with your um, your fixed uh, cheek piece and obviously you can't lower that um, I've not heard of that uh, happening before it's always a possibility uh, but usually you'll find that things work the other way around that um, uh, that you you may need to raise the uh, the scope up to get your correct eye alignment rather than um, it being too low. Now you can obviously fit your scope on any height of scope rings that you like. The scope rings and the scope are not going to affect uh, the, the way that the gun operates. The trajectory, the flight of the pellet out of the barrel is always going to be the same, irrespective of. Um, the height of your scope rings however when it comes to uh, sighting your rifle and uh, using hold over and hold under marks then that is going to be affected by the height of your rings so um, 
let's have a quick look now and I'll make uh, just want to show you with a quick whiteboard demonstration of how the height of your scope above the barrel is going to affect your aim points and what that's going to mean uh, when you decide you know what what height of scope rings that you want let's take a look then at how um, higher scope mounts affect your aim points so what you see on the screen in front of you is two iterations of uh, my ballistic calculator the one that I use uh, Mero and um, as you'll see uh, they're both uh, the settings for my Air Arms S400 and if you go down these uh, all of these settings the only difference that we've got is the sight height so this this is showing the sight height uh, as it is on my rifle of uh, 43 millimeters and what I've done on this right hand side is uh, I've added 10 millimeters so we're just demonstrating the differences between um, scope rings of uh, 10 millimeters in height so coming down here then to um, to the range card and the reticle you'll see that we are uh, we're using a, a zero of 25 yards so the right hand side is uh, all the aim points above the zero range and the left hand side is all the range points uh, is all the aim points below um, the zero range so to begin with then let's have a look at how um, this additional 10 millimeters affects uh, the whole points above the zero range you can see it 25 yards on the cursor here 25 yards on the cursor on the right hand side now immediately you can see that on the standard setup uh, half a mil dot 35 yards one mil dot 41 yards one and a half mil dots 46 yards if we switch over you can see we've got the 25 yard half a mil dots now uh, extended to 37 yards, one mil dot 43 yards, one and a half is 48. Okay, so you can see there that one of the benefits of uh, higher scope mounts is if you're struggling to hit your longer range targets, if you increase the height of your scope, you basically squash your longer range aim points together. So say for example you if you were shooting this rifle on an HFT anything over 25 yards you'll probably find that you can get more aim points within the kill zone so you can bracket the kill zone with more aim points which means that if you're not great for, for one thing if you're not great at um, uh, range finding of those distances you're more likely to get your pellet in the kill or if you're just uh, not very confident at shooting targets of that range uh, you'll fit more aim points into uh, that kill zone so you will improve your chances of hitting the target of killing the target over 25 yards okay so that's a positive but the negative the payoff is if we move over to the left hand side you will notice now uh, that the aim points have got wider apart so we were 13 yards well let's go down to just the eight yards so uh, to get your eight yard um, range any target you're addressing at eight yards you'd be using roughly two aim point uh, two mil dots if we go over to this side we're down now to three mil dots so what that means is that you're making your closer range targets the targets up to 25 yards range uh, in in uh, on an hft course that will be from eight yards to 25 yards you're making the aim points further apart so therefore your range finding has to be more accurate and you have to in order to uh, kill the target because uh, these are likely to be smaller kill zones you have to be more accurate with your range finding and, and more accurate with with which um, aim point you use so it swings and roundabouts you make the longer targets easier you make the shorter targets harder hope that makes sense
So before we um, leave this section, just want to again address something that comes up in the uh, eye alignment debate all the time, and that is uh, parallax error. Um, I've done a few different segments in different videos on uh, on parallax error and uh, continue to to see it misrepresented and um, and talked about you know in, uh, in in ways where people obviously don't understand and um, all I would say that is if you have correct eye alignment so if every time you mount your rifle your eye alignment uh, in relation to your scope is correct and perfect then you don't need to worry about parallax error you'll never never experience it so what we're aiming to do then is to spend our time getting our correct eye alignment making sure that every time we mount the rifle our, our eye alignment is perfect and then you don't need to worry about dealing with parallax error at all so um, let's get that out of the way now it's also worth pointing out that if you're a target shooter and you only ever shoot at one fixed range say for example 25 meters providing your scope uh, is focused correctly at that range uh, then you won't experience any parallax error at all anyway so the next area i want to address is the pistol grip and obviously that is the area that you wrap your hand around this section of the stock here that you wrap your hand around this is a traditional uh, rifle stock so that you've, you've got your fingers your thumb wraps around the top of it um, obviously and then your trigger finger uh, going forward and depending on the size of your hands you may find that the pistol grip is either too small so it doesn't um, fully fit your hand and uh, therefore won't be, feel comfortable or it's too thick and you can't get a grip on it and you actually then can't get your finger far enough forward to uh, um, address the trigger properly. So this is a traditional one, say on this synthetic stock, you can see we've got the thumb hole stock um, and you can see that that's all molded um, for your hands to fit through. Um, so that's one thing that you want to check to make sure that you can actually get a proper grip that's going to fit your hand. They're on these these uh, these stock. Both of these stocks, they're basically fixed thickness. So there's really the only way that you've got of making adjustments to these is uh, in adjusting your trigger, uh, which we'll look at, look at in a while. Um, on a lot of the newer rifles, the um, uh, the sort of the militaristic uh, tactical type stocks, uh, you can get there. They've got um, removable um, grips either AK style or AR style grips. There are plenty of um, replacements on the market at different sizes. So if the one that's fitted to your rifle is, is too thick or too thin, you can buy a replacement, or you can also go to a gunsmith that will uh, make you one out of a bit of laminate um, and um, made to order so that you can get one the right size. So here's a good example of uh, an aftermarket adjustable uh, trigger. Um, this one's made by Rowan Engineering. Uh, now this is on my uh, Walder LGV um, brake barrel Springer rifle, which when it was uh, originally released, uh, had a, a notoriously uh, bad trigger out of the factory from, from uh, what I'm led to believe from what I've read. Uh, so it was a pretty common uh, upgrade to replace the trigger with one of these Rowan triggers. Now you can see here uh, that there is a, a small screw at the top here that you can release. And this trigger shoe actually slides backwards and forwards on a small dovetail. So you can uh, change the, the backwards and forwards position of the trigger um, to make it further away from, uh, from the pistol grip or closer, depending on the size of your hands. There's also a small screw at the back of the um, the trigger blade so you can basically rotate that around this post and also move it up and down. So you've got full three dimensional adjustment to get the trigger in exactly the right place um, to suit the size of your hands to get perfect gun fit. Now if you find that you're uh, unable to fit an adjustable trigger to your rifle 
you might be able to just uh, replace the trigger blade uh, with something like a, a straight setback or a curved setback trigger that reduces the distance from the pistol grip to the trigger blade uh, and makes it more comfortable if your hands are on the small side. Okay, let's wrap this one up then. We covered quite a bit of ground on different bits and pieces that you can do to improve um, the gun fit of your rifle. Obviously, you don't need to do everything all at once. Uh, just a couple of, um, of those things I mentioned will um, make a big difference and you should notice an improvement in your, um, in, in your accuracy of your shooting. Just the fact that you, if the gun fits you properly, you're going to be more comfortable, you're going to feel more confident with it. Um, there's a lot to be said, if you think about this, from trying before you buy. You know, I mean, there are clearly there are going to be some guns on the market, some rifles on the market that are not the right size for you. And if you buy them without trying them beforehand, you know, I wonder whether this is why you hear a lot of cases of people you know, buying a rifle and they don't keep it very long before they move it on and sell it or, or just give up. It might be a case of, um, you know, the rifle doesn't fit them. It just doesn't feel comfortable. And uh, if they've tried it before they bought it, then uh, things might be a bit different. You know, there are times when I've picked up a rifle and uh, it's just felt right. Uh, when I first shot the, um, the Day State Wolverine, it was like that. And, um, you know, that off the shelf, oh, <laughs> it's gone out again. Let's change the battery. There we go, new battery. Yeah, as I was saying, when I very, uh, picked up a Daystate Wolverine for the first time, it felt right. I mean, quite clearly then, perhaps from the, you know, off the shelf, it's the perfect size and shape for, you know, for my body and, and fits me perfectly. Uh, and as a result, I've had, uh, I've had some success with it. So, um, so there you go. So um, anyway, hope you found something of uh, interest in, uh, in amongst that one. And uh, don't forget, if you want to see uh, future videos, then uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And if you kindly help me out by uh, making a comment or uh, hitting the like button, that will help this video be shown to other people that might find it interesting. So hope to see you on the next one then. Until then, bye for now.